Peter B or Tom Duke and others meet Wike in rivers and allow 7 million Nigerians complete voter registration. Serap tells INEC. This is Plus Politics and I am Mary Anako. Labour Party presidential candidate Peter Obi has again visited the River State Governor Nyesum Wike in his private residence as the 2023 elections draw closer. This time, the former Governor of Cross River State Donald Duke, Governor Samuel Otama Benue, and Okezie Ikbazu of Abia State, among other top politicians and statesmen in the South South region, were also at that meeting. Residents and social media users have expressed mixed reactions to the growing political bond between Wike and Obi, as the photographs of the said meeting are currently going viral, describing it as a good development. Obi visits uh, is coming amid a thickened crisis between Governor Wike and the People's Democratic Party presidential candidate, former Vice President Atiku Abubaka, following the outcome of the party's presidential election and his choice of the Delta State Governor Ifani Okoa as running mate. Well, joining us to discuss this is Dr. Yunusa Salisu Tanko. He's the national chairman, NCP, and the spokesman for the NC Front. Thank you so much, Doctor, for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Good evening, Nigerian. Great. Let's get right into it. Um, for, for want of a better way to describe this situation or this love relationship between the governor of River State and uh, that of Dr. Peter Albi, who obviously are from two different political parties, what exactly would you be saying is going on here? Well, you see, in politics, you don't have enemies, but you have permanent interests. Hmm. And in permanent interest, you reach out to even those who are assumed to be your enemy. At a particular point in time, when discussion comes out, you will end up being your best friend. So as a candidate who is running for election, it is very good to reach out to everybody. Those who you come not to be part of you, and those who are part of you. Your friends and your assumed enemy. So at the end of it all, nobody will say you have not reached out to him or her. So what you see is happening in our political life is the capacity of our candidate, Peter Gregory Obi, to have that capacity to be able to reach out to all friends and say, hey, look at this situation. I have this particular capacity, and I can turn the fate of Nigeria, the fate of Nigeria, from a consumption nation to a production nation. So please, why don't you come on board and join me, so that we can be, we make history for Nigeria. So it's as simple as that. So you're telling me that uh, Dr. Obi is trying to get a staunch PDP member like the governor of River State, a former governor of um, uh, Cross River State, Donald Duke, and several other people in those meetings to join forces with him, even when they are members of a very known strong political party who also have a strong presidential candidate. Because from what you're saying, you're saying they, he wants to do this and he's asking them to come on board. Does coming on board mean is, jumping ship? No, there's nothing wrong with that. Just like I explained to you. You see, politics is about you reaching out to people. And by the time you reach out to people, people who must have misunderstood some of your motives, and you explain to them face to face, they may be able to come to come on, the, on the table or table with you. And so that is what is simply playing out. Because if you say you will stay aloof and then take other people as your enemy, what you will have is that they will be injurious to what you are trying to do. Mm. So instead of them being injurious to you, why don't you take them along so that all of them can be friends? But this is and a that game. is how but, governance but, is done. But doctor, I'm so sorry to speak over you. 
This is a game of numbers. They, the PDP does have a presidential candidate. Members of the PDP ought to be working for their presidential candidate because they also all want to, that revert seat, which is the presidency. And I'm wondering mm. um, if these people are seen hobnobbing continuously with a member of another political party who is also a presidential candidate, of course tongues will, wa uh, you know, tongues will wag. Again, if the Labour Party is saying we want to break the old guard and bring in a new guard, why help Nob with the old guard? Well, let me explain something to you. There is one word that they use in politics. They call it campaign. Campaign is your ability to be able to convince those who believe in you and those who do not believe in you to come along with you so that you can work together. Then there's another word they call consultation. Consultation simply means you'll be able to tell somebody that I'm doing this A, B, C, D for this, for this particular reason. And in that case, I think you will play a better part with me than with the other person. So that's what consultation is. So what you are seeing going on is, is consultation and reaching out. And don't forget, Peter Obi had been one time friends to these people that are this is called ally. They've been discussing politics before. So there's nothing wrong with him reaching out to them. In fact, it shows his capacity, his sagacity, his articulation, and his personal interaction with the people that he knows and trying to drag them together with him for the prosperity of this country. That is one of the most humble way of politics. Hmm. Okay, um, Governor Autumn of uh, Benway State was uh, questioned by some pressmen about um, his meeting uh, with the Labour Party candidate, Dr. Uh, Peter Obi. Um, now, according to Governor Autumn, he said he didn't necessarily say exactly why they met, but he did say that um, there was nothing wrong with meeting with uh, Mr. Obi. He also said that at the end, the solution to the challenges of Nigeria is what matters. Where we are today calls for all hands on deck. Um, I mean, this is, this is subject to all kinds of interpretation, but I'll let you do the interpretation if you had any idea what he meant. Well, uh, Governor Otoma said it all, that no single person can provide a solution to the problem of Nigeria. So it is best that all of us come together. Believe me, so, Nigeria is in the quagmire. And we need all hands on deck to bring our best 11 to be able to solve the problem on ground. So, so that is why um, our own presidential candidate, Comrade Peter Obi, is playing a bipartisan campaign and, consulting and consultation, reaching out to all friends and saying that, look, I am just a subject ready to be used for the emancipation of the Nigerian people. And there's no better time than now. So he's reaching out to his friends, he's very up. I saw Governor Olusha Gumimiko, I saw Governor Dankombo, and all of them have worked together before. So if they have worked together, they must have been thinking about problem of Nigeria. And today, if that radical that you saw them, that is what they are trying to look for, solution and then support the best candidate. And we believe Peter Gregory Obi is the best candidate to do this work. Let's talk about the politics of uh, the people, uh, in fact, the host of that meeting, the politics around the host of that meeting, the governor of River State, Governor Yesum Wike, and all that has been going on within you know, the PDP. Um, now, we all know that there seems to be a, a somewhat of a running battle between him and the presidential flag bearer of his party. And his hub-nubbing with the Labour Party candidate uh, has made people wonder if there might be, you know, an opening for him to want to move to the Labour Party, even though he has said publicly that he would not leave his party. But uh, if there were an opportunity, would the Labour Party be opening its doors to Governor Wike? Well, for us, it's, it's about changing the narrative in Nigeria. And anybody who believes 
that we had time for everybody to come together to rescue Nigeria, he is welcome. The conglomerate of the National Consultative Front, who adopted the Labour Party on the 22nd of May, and then the coming in of Peter will be on the 27th of May, and the influence of various different groups of all Nigerians has made us stronger. It doesn't belong to any one particular person, but for the whole Nigerians. And so, therefore, if anybody who decides to change now and come into our force and see spreading the same message, we are changing Nigeria from a consumption nation to a production nation, he is welcome. I want After to, all, I want Nigeria to take is what we want to salvage. I want to take you up and on something you just Nigerians. said. Uh, doctor, I want to take you up on something you just said. You said if they decide to change. So you think that... Yeah. You think that the PDP, in its 16 years of running this country without change, whatever you would want to itemize or call that, or, or the APC who's still in power without change, would all of a sudden overnight change because they want to join the Labour Party? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand what you mean by change, then join you. What does that mean? Exactly. Exactly. You see, the Labour Party and the obedient movement is out to rescue Nigeria. And we have a mantra, consumption to production. We are masses driven. We want to change the labor issue of Nigeria where strike cannot take a supreme position in Nigeria. We want to change the position of our insecurity nation. We want to change the economic situation of this country. We want to change the, ed the educational system of this country. We want to change the inflow of electricity and power supply into Nigeria. We want to change so that anytime you move out of this country, you'll be recognized as an indigent of a country that has integrity and name. These are some of the things we want to give to them. And we want to give Nigeria back to the Nigerian people. So anybody who believes in this particular statement, he is welcome to join us. I, 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 what I hear, you might correct me if you want. Um, how do you change, how do you pour new wine into old wine skin? Because this is what I'm hearing. They decide to change. And this is going to only happen just in a few months that we have before 2023. How truthful is that change and how realistic is it? Again, you know, like I said, what? like I said, these are the people who have brought us to where we are right now, practically on our knees. And these are the same people okay. you want to bring into the fold. What difference does it make? Exactly. Now, when you want to change in old wine, you bring a new packaging. You may add some neutral ingredients into it. I can make it better and, and, and taste sweeter. And then at the end of it, what does it become? It becomes a new product. Exactly what we are trying to do. So when everybody comes with his own good ideas that can help to change the dynasty of this country, change the narrative of this country, from the old order to a new order, all kind of new ingredients must be put into that bottle. And that ingredient is what we are putting into this particular old bottle to make it new, beautiful, and more attractive and rebrand Nigeria for the benefit of the Nigerian people. Let's, let's move on to other matters. Um, we have seen several people call out the obedient movement for um, gaslighting and um, being rude or harsh to people who do not necessarily support their cause. Now, you've continuously in this interview told me what you think that, the Labour, or what you know the Labour Party is after and what changes they want to bring. Now, how can we have that change if the people who support, who stand for these change, do not have a character reformation of sorts? Is, is, is the Labour Party also prioritising how issues are being dealt with? Now, what I have said over the over the years, and what we represent. We have a document of agenda, which has been submitted to us by the TUC, and they are submitted one by the NLC. The Labour Party has its manifesto, 
So everybody, anybody who wants to lead us must work within the documents that are being presented as a working document. Mm. That is our guide. And the principle of the Labour Party is being clear. It's masses driven, socialist in the nature, uh, 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 democratic social, so that it can emancipate the Nigerian people from the circle of poverty. Mm. So we have a guide. It's not about the individual. But there's a document that will guide you into getting to that particular thing done. I'd like to push you further. In terms of the people that you have as a movement, I mean, I see that you have a widespread movement to, from all parts of the, across, across the country. Um, I always try to have every political party tell me how much they're doing in terms of voter sensitization, voter education, not just about getting their PVCs, but knowing where to vote, where their polling units are. Of course, INEC has a duty to you know, do that, but then political parties have that mandate of voter education. But hardly do we see political parties voter educate. We see more of mudslinging and, of course, bad-mouthing. What is the Labour Party willing to do differently from the status quo? Oh, come again, I didn't hear you very well. Well, I'm, I'm talking about voter education and voter sensitization. We see a lot okay, of people, okay. we see a lot of people that are, you know, following your movement. But then what is the Labour Party doing in sensitizing people, oh. not just about getting your PVC, oh. but much more, uh, as, as much as knowing where your ward is, your polling unit, what you need to do when you get there, uh, as opposed I to what the other political parties do? Fantastic. Thank you very much. We have 174,600 and 900 and something polling units. The Labour Party has done something that is so wonderful just recently, and I, and I, and I, and I want to say no political party has done so at the moment. They mobilized their leadership of the NWC under the leadership of Barista Aburi, and the secretaryship of Barista um, um, Alaji Omar Ibrahim Faru, they divided this, the country into six zones and moved out everybody to go and have a town hall meeting. We just came back from the Northwest. We toured the Northwest with the leadership of uh, Ibrahim Faru Umar. We were in Sokoto, Kebbi, Lamfara. Katina, Kano, Jigawa, and Kaduna. It, is, it will amaze you to know all of these places that we went to. The four were full back down. And that was when we educated the people about our candidate, what he believes in, that he wants to run a clean and clear campaign. The word of moon sliding, name calling, and then backbiting, but major on, on issue-based campaign. And at that point also, we educate the, the people about the logo of the party and what it represents, which is Mama, Papa, and Peking. And we educated them all around. The same thing was done in all the other six geographical, geographical zones. Trying to let them understand that the Labour Party stands for equity, fairness, and justice for all. And then at that point, I saw a lot of marvelous events. I met a lady called Aisha. She was in Zamfara State. And then she, she's a physically challenged person. She said to us, she had never been happy in her life. Because she has seen hope for Nigeria. So imagine if this Kalitalem person vote for Peter Obi, we are home and dry. And that is the same way we saw the billboard of Peter Obi and Dirty Ahmed raining high in Sokoto State, unblemished. Even while other ones were being destroyed. You saw only Dirty Obi, uh, Obi, uh, Obi and Dirty, and Dirty, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, what do I call them, Billboard. Still standing. That is the nature of how we are recept, received everywhere in this country. So therefore, it made it easy for us 
to use the number of support groups that we have still, still galvanizing more because we have them in hundreds. And we keep on telling them the battleground is at the polling unit. We need you at the polling unit. And we keep on educating them. And this will continue. Okay. You cannot imagine the milestone, the kind of um, mileage we've gotten from this. So the sensitization and mobilization will continue. Because as we spoke, other people are speaking to others. Others are speaking to another. And the whole Nigeria is getting agog. Because they are tired. They've tested the blue. They've tested the green. They have seen what it's like. But now they want to dovetail into a capable driver. Okay. With an assistant driver that okay. had the capacity to drive them to Asu Rock and change the narrative of this country. And that is Peter and that you will be. Finally, before I let you go, Doctor, um, there was an unconfirmed report uh, that allegedly the most recently pardoned um, Joshua Darie was about to pick a senatorial ticket uh, with the Labour Party. And that, again, did raise eyebrows. So I'm going to go straight to my question. Um, what is the guarantee that people like this or maybe power-hungry persons, as opposed to people who truly want to serve Nigeria, don't take advantage of the Labour Party and the goodwill of the people towards your presidential candidate? Well, we are careful. And that is why we are guided by the documents of, of the Labour Party at the manifesto and the TUC documents and that of the NLC. Because the target is for the people, not the individual. As long as we do what is right for the interest of the people, everybody will be a beneficiary of it. So the idea of somebody taking advantage will not even come up at all. Because what we are doing is for the interest of the whole. Because let's even look at it. If they are secured, you can move from Kaduna to Kano, from Kaduna to Abuja, or any part of this country. Is it only to the benefit of myself alone? It's for the benefit of everybody. Or if the education of Nigeria has been transformed, where our ASU people will not be able to go into a strike, and a child can go to school in four years and come out with quality education, is it the benefit of Tanko or Obi? No, it's for the benefit of all. If the economy of this country can change from being a consumption nation to a production nation, who will be economically advantaged? It's the Nigerian people. This is exactly what we are saying. So in all sector of our life, we are trying to change it for the betterment of our people. So if you want to take advantage of it, take advantage of it for the benefit of your unborn child. That is the change in which you are talking about. Okay. Well, I want to say thank you, uh, Dr. Tanko Yunusa is the national chairman of the NCP and spokesperson for NC Front. He's also a member of the Labour Party. Thank you so much, Dr for joining us. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll take a look at yesterday's conversation between Serap and, of course, Einek. Uh, of course, Serap was suing Einek over this continuous voters registration exercise. We'll be back after this break.